On August 15th, Tesla launched a new home charging product. It's called the Tesla Universal Wall Connector. And the unit can charge any electric vehicle sold in North America because it has a built-in Magic Dock adapter. Now, Tesla sent me one of the units so I could review it. And as soon as I received it, I made a quick first impression video and showed my followers exactly what this new unit looks like. However, my full review is gonna take about two and a half weeks because I do a lot of testing before I publish the review. And judging from the comments in the first video, my followers wanted more and they wanted to at least see the unit working. So I decided to swap it out with my old Gen 3 Tesla wall connector. And you can see on the wall here is the new Tesla Universal wall connector. And I wanted to see exactly how it worked, how the adapter pulls out and latches in, and if you can remove the adapter from the Tesla connector once it's released from the unit. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the installation really quickly, and then how this new Universal wall connectors Magic Dock adapter works. This video, as well as all of the videos here on State of Charge, is sponsored by QMerit. Once I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're gonna buy, then follow the link in the description of my videos and have QMerit install it. Okay, so the first thing I had to do was remove the Gen 3 wall connector. That's a pretty simple task. After turning off the circuit breaker so there's no power flowing to the unit, I removed the four screws that attach the wall connector to the mounting plate. Once the unit was removed, I then had to remove the three wires before removing the two screws that hold the mounting plate to the wall. Once that was done, I needed to drill a hole in the new mounting plate to accommodate the wiring which enters in the rear of the unit. The mounting plate is very similar to that of the Gen 3s, but it's definitely not the same. However, the mounting holes are identical, so you can use the same holes and anchors that you used if you are upgrading from a Gen 3 wall connector. I then screwed the new mounting plate to the wall and connected the three wires. I do want to point out that this is just a temporary install for me to demonstrate the unit. My channel sponsor, Qmerit, will be coming to my house very soon to check the installation and torque all the wires to the proper tightness. I actually have a deal with them where they have to install all of my charging equipment. And inside the unit, Tesla actually prints the amount of torque that you're supposed to tighten the screws to. Now tightening to the proper torque is essential for home charging equipment. The three biggest causes that we've seen for charger problems is the use of inferior outlets if you want a NEMA 1450 outlet. But if you're hard wiring, the two biggest problems are if you use aluminum wire, you should never use aluminum wire on your EV home charging equipment. And the second problem is by not torquing the wires to the manufacturer's spec. So you absolutely need a torque wrench and tighten them to the right torque. Okay, so after attaching the wires, all I needed to do was snap on the charger attach the four screws and energize the circuit. So the swap is complete, it's powered up, it looks like everything is working. And for the first time, I'm gonna see if this Magic Dock Universal Wall Connector releases because I was a little concerned when the unit came and I couldn't remove it from the body of the unit, but I assumed that it needed to be powered up, that the locking mechanism was in the closed position so you couldn't take it out. So let's see, I should be able to push this tab in and release it. And as soon as I pushed the tab and I heard the locking mechanism release. So here you go. Here is the AC version of Tesla's Magic Dock. The tab here, now let's see if I can remove it. I can't. Nope. 
it's locked to the Tesla connector, to the NAX connector, which is how you would want it to be. You wouldn't want somebody to be able to steal this in public. Now, I'm sure people are going to figure out how to remove this. I even saw online some people figured out how to remove the Magic Dock adapter from the Tesla connector because that's also tethered to the Tesla connector when you remove it from the supercharger because they don't want people to be able to steal these things. Uh, so it is tethered to it. And as I said, I'm sure somebody's going to figure out how to remove it. Um, if I do, I probably won't uh, talk about that on the channel because I don't want to encourage people from stealing these things. But it's locked to the, uh, the NAX connector. You cannot remove it. So let's put it back in. Locks in. See, if you just pull, the Tesla connector comes out. Now push it back in, push the button, it releases, and there you go. The universal wall connector adapter. Okay, so now I pulled my Chevy Bolt EV into the garage. Let's make sure it works. Plugged in, blue blinking light. green blinking lights and we got the bolt to beep that actually took a little bit longer than what the uh, bolt usually takes to authenticate the charger and say okay this is a safe connection let me start charging it seems like it took just a maybe a second longer but in any event it's working and charging so we've got the first uh video of a tesla universal charger with their ac version of the magic dock charging a non-Tesla electric vehicle. Pretty cool. All right, so uh, to remove it, you press the button and we should hear it shut, stop charging and, and release. Yep, as soon as I press the button, the universal wall connector, you heard the contact close and the, uh, the charger stopped charging. And there we go. Tesla universal wall connector. And that's, that's really slick that it locks to the connector like this so people can't steal. I kind of figured they would do that. Otherwise, it would be a big problem. But um, really cool. Really, as you can tell, I'm excited about this uh, new charging option. I think it's going to be a very, very popular unit. I think a lot of people are going to want this because, hey, with this one unit, uh, you can charge any electric vehicle sold in North America. You don't have to worry about down the road. Well, what if I like this? the new Tesla coming out and I buy that or what if I like this? What if I want to buy a used EV that has a J1772 some, somewhere down the road? Then you got to buy an adapter. And as I said in my other videos, um, you know, unless you buy an adapter that's made from the OEM like Tesla, you, you don't really know the level of quality and you're introducing another thing that could fail. And I know that's the same case with this, uh, but I Tesla puts good stuff out. Uh, Tesla equipment, in it, Cars aside, Tesla vehicles, uh, Tesla vehicles, Tesla charging equipment and adapters is first class. And um, I have confidence that this is going to work for a very long time. I'll use the heck out of it here in State of Charge Garage. I'll use this thing to charge all the EVs I test and uh, even my own personal electric vehicles, even though I can charge quicker on the Ford Charge Station Pro because I can deliver up to uh, 80 amps to my Ford Lightning, which can accept 80 amps. But I'll use this thing anyway, just so I use the heck out of this thing and see if it um, deteriorates. Uh, I don't expect that to happen, but hey, that's why we do this testing here and uh, you never know. Uh, Tesla could have rushed to bring this to market and it might be under-engineered. I highly doubt that, but uh, you don't know till you use the heck out of it, which I'm going to do. Listen, um, that's it for my first look. As I mentioned in my previous video, we're going to be doing a full review of the new universal wall connector, uh, including my deep freeze test. And I have a new test that's a heat test. I have a heat lamp that I'm going to bake the unit for a certain period of time, get it nice and hot, then plug it a vehicle in, let it charge for a few hours, make sure it doesn't overheat. Um, and all the other tests that we do, the connector drop test and all things like that. So that'll be interesting doing the connector drop test with this. So um, uh, that'll be coming up uh, probably not for uh, at least another two weeks. I'm taking a little time off now for vacation. And uh, then I need to use this for a couple of weeks before I do my full review. But look for that sometime in uh, early September. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, give me a like on this video, all that good stuff so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.